Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Simon Rachenko. I'm a PhD student from University of Turin from Technoculture PhD School. And uh, here I'm presenting a study from Ukraine, from Ukrainian STEP, uh, co authored by my colleagues from Institute of Archaeology uh, from Kyiv. It's all about uh, burial tradition. Uh, and rock art complexes in Ukraine. So the ge geography of the study is here. It is the southeastern Ukraine, uh, the border of Eurasian steppe belt. So on the, from the climatic point of view, uh, this is the steppe region and it is flat and dry and there are some rivers but no forests and from on the other hand this is still european place where the biggest and probably the only rock art complex rock art location is situated uh, this is kaminamahila hill that contains thousands of different engravings uh, on the 68 uh, rock art locations uh, from different age starting from upper Paleolithic. Uh, and up to modern age. So what the Kaminamahiva is? This is the sandstone mound, Monadnock, that originated uh, 14, billion, uh, 14 million years ago on the bottom of Thermatian Sea. Uh, there's a discussion concerning its origin and probably this is the part of Caldera, so uh, it, has, uh, it is a trace of volcano activity um, proceed by um, bot uh, sea bottom sediments. Uh, anyway, uh, after the Sarmatian Sea has gone, uh, the Monadnock uh, here was an attractive point for numerous cultural groups from different uh, ages and from different periods. And these people came here to uh, live and to produce their own uh, sacrificial images, rock art images of different shape. So you see the landscape uh, situation here is really special and this place really lacks of sand and of stones and of petrographic anomalies and Kaminamahila is very picturesque petrographic anomaly that definitely attracted um, the uh, ancient people from uh, environmental point of view because this is something completely special in the landscape of Ukrainian steppe. So the uh, petroglyphs, the engravings of Kaminamahila are very numerous and very different starting from the um, barleaves and uh, engravings of any fishes or bulls, uh, this particular bull is quite important, dated back to an Neolithic age, or maybe this goat that presumably date to Iron Age. So there's a number of different um, drawing tradition and uh, different semantic meaning for a lot of these images. Uh, this one is also from one of Kaminamahila grottos, from Grotta, and it is important because it is um, most probably dated back to an uh, early Bronze Age of this region, when it was situated by the representatives of Yamna culture, Yamna early Bronze Age culture, that um, yeah, um, produced uh, mostly the meat and milk from the nomad pastoralism. So um, uh, the images of bulls are quite important in the um, habitation model of this people and uh, we will refer to this later on. This is the image of a bull dating back to analytic I have shown you before. The piece of a huge discussion concerning um, Kaminamahila rock art from technological and semantical point of view. And this is the image also belongs, this image also belongs to uh, early Bronze Age, Yamna culture tradition, this uh, oval shaped sandal 
is typical for Yamna for 28, 2600 years BC, um, more or less um, precisely dated. So, what is important that uh, these cultural groups that uh, migrated and lived around the Kamenomahila Hill uh, habituated the huge area around and produced different kind of sites like settlements, Kamenomahila 1 and Kamenomahila 2, and late Bronze Age site nearby the hill, and a lot of burial uh, sites. Uh, on the sufficient distance, it may be a few hundred meters or even 20-25 kilometers away from Kaminomahila Hill, but all the sites are um, connected with the uh, rock art uh, location. And we know this from the uh, specific um, megalithic tradition that originated um, right nearby the Kaminomahila. The point is, the megalithic tradition for Ukrainian steppe is not kind of unique but more or less rare because the stones are rarer material here. And um, in fact, right up to 19th century, uh, the most buildings here have been built from soil, clay, or wood. And stones, as the is quite rare, especially for prehistorical constructions. So even if we meet uh, the something made of small stones but constructed and uh, architectured in some sort of shape of tradition, this might be considered as megalithic for in shape of Ukrainian step. Mostly burial constructions here are. Uh, created with a tumuli corgan, so it is a uh, soil construction mm. uh, that uh, and uh, Ukrainian steppe has a lot of them. It's uh, dozens of thousands on, on the whole territory of Ukraine, and it's quite hard to count them all. But right here, the bureau tradition is quite special. Let's look at it closer. This is one of the brightest examples from 1992, a few kilometers away from Camino Mahila. And this is a stone circle with the bureau man in the middle area, covered with the mm, uh, sandstone blocks. And these sandstone blocks are definitely, were definitely taken from Camino Mahila Hill, which is known from uh, the uh, const high concentration of iron in the sandstone, the specific color and density of the stone, and very recognizable petrographic structure. The uh, bureau itself is dated back to an analytic early Bronze Age of the region, according to the flint inventory that probably belongs to Mycop culture. And in fact, even this kind of construction that are quite small may be considered as a megalithic one. At least it is stone construction, which is quite rare here. Other example is from excavations of 1973. It's 25 kilometers away from Kamino Mahila, but still is this is a stone box made of Kamino Mahila sandstone that were taken all for all of this distance. And the box was closed from the top um, inside our uh, inventory of flint tools and vessel that indicate the analytic origin and uh, flint tools, flint points are also typical to Mycop culture. Uh, this is the cultural group that uh, probably originated on North Caucasian region. So it's on uh, migrated from the south east to Ukrainian steppe in early Bronze Age and uh, there are some cultural impacts though the most part of population here belong to Yamna culture tradition. So that is the most probably distanced example of stone boxes uh, from Kaminomohila made of Kaminomohila sandstone. The third one is a set of 
uh, box a, sent, a set of graves on a Kermin, a few kilometers north from Kaminomahila. And this is quite special because it contains a full set of different uh, features, like the coverage with red ochre, the stone circle around the grave, the grave itself, uh, that one on the left picture is quite noticeable because it contains a kind of special entrance to the grave space. Yeah, and all that has been covered with the soil to create a small kurgan or tumuli. So uh, the grave has been covered over. Yeah, uh, this also belongs to Neolithic uh, and Early Bronze Age, but no radiocarbon data has been um, received from these materials. So uh, supposedly, from the shape of vessels and shape of plinths, we assume Early Bronze Age origination of these materials. Anyway. All of this is made from like Kaminomahila sandstone, so indicates a direct relation to the rock art site, obviously. And the four case uh, from this set of today is quite nearby the Kaminomahila, the one we excavated in 2017. It's just 200 meters away from Kaminomahila. On the maps of 19th century, it has been marked as a tumuli, as a corgan. Nearby the grave, the shallow one. <clears throat> but when we start the excavation, we discover that this is not actually a tumuli, uh, but just a surface grave uh, constructed on the ancient surface with no traces of soil coverage over the grave. So it's just a surface construction, which is uh, extremely rare for the early Bronze Age of the region. Because uh, the burial tradition for that age uh, typically assumes the construction of tumuli or corgan or any soil construction over grave. And here we have just a surface construction, also made from Kavinomahila sandstone. The blocks are quite big, the bigger, biggest one is almost uh, 700 kilograms weight. And this has been fixed with small stones uh, and uh, clay structures to create the box uh, with uh, some um, special features. We modeled this uh, through photogrammetry and edges of meta shape to uh, receive the data concerning the size parameters and weight, etc. And uh, what uh, uh, is extremely interesting the, on that grave is the probable top of the box that has been destroyed by Plafin um, and uh, we fixed it and understood it from uh, an amount of small stones that covered the upper part of the grave but has, has, has been highly destroyed and uh, mixed and the second is this small stone nearby the head of the grave that has been covered with shallow uh, notches and engravings, kind of engraving, engravings that are likely artificial. However, all this requires additional study on the microscopic level, probably. The buried uh, was a man of 25 years old, dated back by radiocarbon dates to uh, 2027 hundreds BC. Um, his inventory was quite poor, though the grave itself indicates a special social position. Uh, the untypically uh, to uh, untypical for Yamna culture burials. Uh, the inventory is unusually poor uh, for um, a socially important person. It contains just a shell of Unio nearby the buried head and a small piece of limestone. 
the microscopic investigation of this limestone indicated the artificial processing and what is more important the uh, piece of autogenous copper which um, might indicate the um, trace of uh, re relocalization a uh, trace of import from the nearest copper um, copper consistent places like uh, Donbass mountains, Donetsk mountains or even the Caucasus mountains. Um, again, this <clears throat> might be analyzed once more through chemical, from chemical point of view. However, uh, the existence of limestone, which is untypical for the region, and the oxygen copper, which is also unusual, indicates the uh, uh, non-local origination of this inventory. Nearby the grave, the two ritual structures have been found. The first one is the school of Yan Bu and Limbon, uh, date back to 26-2500 years BC. And this is definitely a ritual sacral location, <coughs> sacral uh, object, that brings us back to the um, sacralization of bulls and cows in during Neolithic and Early Bronze Age of the region that is indicated by the rock art tradition and by the uh, numerous examples of such sacral Mm, events uh, nearby the Camino uh, Another ritual object is the overturned vessel, a typical one for uh, Yamna culture uh, or um, developed Yamna culture, similar to the ones that has been found in Ackermann 1 and Ackermann 2. These sites excavated during 1952 nearby the Camino Mahila. The um, process the ritual of vessels or turn is known from early bronze age and middle bronze age of the region of ukrainian steppe and here we see that once again that indicates also the relation of the grape to the yamna culture and early bronze age of the region all of this together um, makes it the grape on the one point of view quite unusual for the bureau tradition of Yamna culture because uh, for now only four surface graves for this culture is known and um, such bureau tradition is more typical to the global emperor culture however oh, the area of the later localization is far northwestern to, from the Camino Hila. Though uh, some cultural transmissions have been indicated for Yamna and global emperor culture, so the existence of such phenomenon might be one more indication of these interconnections. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the inventory and the um, ritual nature is typical for the Yamna culture and for early Bronze Age on the region. And finally, what is also important is that um, the, these graves and these megalithic constructions are used to use the sandstones from Kaminama Hill. Indeed, such kind of stone boxes are known for Kimiaba culture, which is located in on Crimea Peninsula and nearby and uh, named by Valentin Danilenko according to the special bureau tradition of um, bo uh, stone boxes inside the pits covered with red ochre but uh, the box from 1917 nearby Kamino don't look like Kimiaba one due to the lack of ochre and the lack of uh, the box geometry and uh, the slightly different dates and inventory. So 
rather than indicating cannibal culture, this box points unusual social position of, of, of the young culture representative. Finally, the origination of all the stones from this construction uh, or other constructions, all that has been shown today, uh, points that Kaminamahila Hill and Kaminamahila Rock Art Complex played a special role in the cultural landscape of the region. And indeed, the whole cultural environment of Kaminamahila Hill has been um, impacted by the uh, sandstone monadnock and the rock art site. And the availability of this special sacral uh, sandstone location caused uh, the existence of this sort of megalithic structures and sort of megalithic burial tradition that is quite unusual for Ukrainian step, however, uh, represents the special case of Kaminamohila cultural landscape and the uh, quite special process of uh, Ukrainian um, um, archaeological Got sorry, quite special process for Ukrainian archaeology. So that's it, and uh, obviously uh, a lot of studies yet to come. And Kamenomohila and Kamenomohila cultural landscape is still to be studied, and this study should be developed to uh, introduce this features of this landscape in, in more in their complexity. However, what is obvious that a set of special um, points, special traditions and special features indicate the enormous uh, concentration of um, rituals and sacral patterns for this landscape. So it's quite intriguing and interesting what will come from the further study in that region. Thank you for attention and many thanks from my colleagues from Institute of Archaeology and New York Archaeological School for their participation in excavation procedure. Thanks for the Archaeological PhD School and to the staff of National Historical and Archaeological Reserve of Camino Mohila for their terrific help during excavation and research. And once again, thank you for attention, ladies and gentlemen. Bye.